Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and today we're taking footage and turning it into a big old grid of emoji. I recently saw some pieces uh, by a video artist who was doing this all manually in a recent series, and since I'm often trying to do less work, I cobbled up this method that I hope illuminates some concepts behind procedural graphics in Adobe After Effects. Stick around for the whole video, because towards the end we'll look at some tweaks to the process that can really make this your own. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. If you're looking to learn about animation, they've got plenty of courses on that, as well as design, photography, illustration, film. All are great and taught by experts at the top of their craft. Experts like Russ Etheridge, who actually has two classes on there currently that I really recommend you check out. 3D for 2D animation and modeling in Cinema 4D. Russ has such a great way of breaking down the fundamentals of what can be a very intimidating process. If you're thinking about adding 3D to your workflow in any capacity, do yourself a favor, check out his classes. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get 30% off an annual premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Even if you've already had a free trial of Skillshare, you can still take advantage of this offer to get a full year of unlimited learning and creative exploration. Big thanks to Skillshare for helping support the channel. Now let's get into that tutorial. First, Let's get some parts. We need some emoji, so I'm gonna pull those from Emojipedia. And I want to pick some that have a good spectrum of tone or color. I want these little bits to become pixels or voxels, so they need to be prominent enough or have some dominant colors so I can use them in replace of blocks of color and tone. And thankfully, these are all the same size and dimension. That's gonna make this a lot easier later when all of our components are coming in at the same size. I'm also gonna grab some footage as well, and I'm feeling a little bit cheap today, so we're gonna be using the big bin of free footage over at Adobe Stock. Those are gonna be our ingredients. But we're gonna start here by creating a composition to hold our footage. I'm just gonna make a big old square here. Let's go with 2000 by 2000. That's gonna help my math be a little bit easier later on, but don't worry too much about specific numbers. Worry instead about ratios, because maybe you have different sizes of things coming in. Maybe you'll want this to be more granular, less granular, I don't know. But I'm gonna drop some footage down here and scale it up to fill the frame. I'm not really too concerned if scaling this up makes it look bad because I need to eventually turn this into a bunch of chunky squares. And to do that, I'm gonna drop an adjustment layer over here and I'm gonna use the mosaic effect to turn this into, what else? A mosaic of squares. So let's say 40 by 40 blocks. If we have 40 blocks over 2000 pixels, that means each block is 50 pixels. For us, that's how big one emoji needs to be. But your number may be different if you're using more or fewer blocks and larger or smaller comps. And I'm gonna advise turning on sharp colors to enjoy a little bit more contrast in the image. I find that it helps. Making this into squares isn't enough. I need to clamp down on the values of those squares. I only want as many different colored squares as there will be emoji. So for this first one, we're gonna do five. In order to get there, I'm gonna apply a posterize or posterize, I'm not really sure which way people prefer to say that, and set the level here down to five. But notice, this is made much more than five colors. So I'm gonna strip out some of the color information first with a tint effect. Now we have only five levels. By simplifying the information coming into the effect, it's much easier to control the outputs coming out of it. Now we clearly have only five levels of blocks that can be used to build the rest of the effect. And at this stage, I'm gonna drop a curves effect on my footage so I can get a better balance of tones and bring out more details. We'll talk more about this later on as well, but be prepared to work the footage for ideal results with curves, levels, and other color correction effects. But for now, let's go ahead and make our wall of emoji. Now, we wrote down that specific 50 by 50 pixel value. That's how large a single emoji must be. But you could also just make After Effects do the maths for you. I do, usually. Drag in an emoji taken from Emojipedia, the fine website where you can learn about the various icons that people may send you, and I may need to scale this up or down to get some padding around it, but I'm kind of happy with where it is for now. So now I'm gonna make a comp that is 2000 by 2000 pixels. This is gonna form our wall, same size as we made to hold our footage. And we need a grid that is just full up of 25 emoji across and down. So I'm gonna bring in my original unit. 
I'm going to put that up in the top corner here, and I'm going to use the reptile effect to expand this to the right and expand it down. Boom, giant field of emoji, we have nailed it. Before we move on though, one last thing I want to do. I'm not really interested in making a new wall, a new comp for every single emoji I might want to use. So I'm going to go and open the essential graphics window. I'm going to set the primary comp to be this wall of emoji, the thing I want to add controls for, and then I go down to this emoji unit layer, and I drag that footage layer up into the controls for that wall. This will allow us to actually replace this later procedurally. Let me see how it works on our next step, assembly. I'll make a new comp, call it assembly. Surprise, surprise, it's the same size as the wall and the same size as that squared off footage, 2000 pixels all around. And we'll bring in our first pair of partners here. One copy of those gray blocks, one copy of the wall of emoji. Now, I only need some of the blocks, so I'm going to extract what I need using the extract effect. Applying this lets us dial in which blocks we want to keep and which ones we want to remove. And as you can see on this histogram, we have some pretty well-defined levels in here. So I'm just going to take the lower fifth of the histogram, just the darkest pixels, and then I will set the wall of emoji to look at this layer as an alpha mat. So pieces of that wall will only be visible where the layer above it is visible. And since these are the darkest pixels, I will replace this charming blue dolphin with a darker image using the essential properties, simply dragging a new image down into this space in the essential properties using the media replacement. Boom, new emoji. And now, we just need to repeat this for the rest of the bands of color. So duplicate the set by using Command or Control D, and we change the extract effect here to be the next fifth of the histogram. We just bump that up, and we're gonna change the emoji using that essential properties to replace the media. Now repeat that for as many levels as you have to fill in the rest of the image. Duplicate the set, change the range on the extract, swap out the image. Duplicate, change, swap, and we're done. To look at that, the footage is now a grid of emoji that changes as the footage changes. We nailed it. Kind of. Some footage just simply won't work very well. But never fear, it's actually pretty simple to swap out any footage you want. You just go into that comp that holds it and put something new in here under that adjustment layer. You may also need to mess with the brightness and contrast a little to get the details you want to stand out or read correctly, but notice that some footage that might seem very clear and certain because the hues are all so unique, it doesn't really work out because the luminance of those pixels has very little difference. Like this elephant clip here. You may want to use things like change color or change to color, these kinds of color correction effects that allow you to isolate a color and manipulate it very specifically. We can tweak this stuff all over the place because remember, it doesn't really need to look good. We just need to process it so that the values are far enough apart that our stack of effects, our process here, separates them the way we want. But what if we could change so that instead of looking at the luminance of a clip, the luminance of the pixels, we could just use the hue of things? Let's do that by modifying our method slightly and start by taking this tint away. Notice that we now have many, many, many colors coming through. In fact, despite there being five levels, we have way more than five colors. Now, why is that? Well, it's because Posterize works per channel, meaning there are five levels of red, green, and blue being combined together. I'm going to turn that down to only two levels, meaning that for every pixel, red is either on or off, green is either on or off, and blue is either on or off. So while we're down at two levels for each channel, that actually means a total of eight possible colors. Now why? Why eight possible colors? Well, let's enjoy this wonderful insert graphic to help explain it. Imagine, if you will, red, green, and blue are now behaving like switches. Since we're allowing two levels of each channel, that means that these things are either on or off. Those are the two levels, 0% or 100%. So if we have red on and all the others off, that pixel would be red. Same for green and blue. One on, the other's off. That's three colors right away. If we throw all the switches on, that's gonna be full white. If we take all the switches to off, that's gonna be full black. It's two more, we're up to five. And if we only turn off one of the switches, we end up with yellow, cyan, and magenta. So that's our total of eight from a posterize of level two. So now with this filter in play, we can reduce any footage to only eight colors. So back in the assembly zone, we need to try to extract only blocks of one color at a time. We can do that in many ways, but one of the simplest ways is to use the supposedly obsolete color key effect. But as you can see, that just removes a color. Ah, blurg. That's the opposite of what we wanted. 
No worries. We can just invert the alpha with the invert effect set to alpha, and then we're fine. Do that eight times, once for each color. Drag out eight emojis to get into play here, so we have eight pairs driving this whole effect. And I'm going to make sure I'm using one emoji that's emblematic of each color. And now we have a hue-based approach. Which of these approaches is right for you and your footage? I'm not sure. And maybe you need a combination of both ideas. And you'll likely still need to work with your footage using adjustments to push the values to make sure the right details are ending up on the right side of the divide. Whichever way you go, you'll also want to posterize the time. Using this effect can bring down the observed frame rate so that it can be a little less jittery, maybe helps the effect read better. Just apply the posterized time to an adjustment layer as you like, maybe eight frames a second, maybe more. That's down to taste, really. But wait, if you're not happy with just using footage, swap it out, swap it out with anything. Maybe use some fractal noise. Now you have a wall of random emoji. How about we put in some shape layer animations instead? It's really easy to control the colors of elements because I can simply pick what color these shapes are. Nailed it with that one. How about some text? Wouldn't it be great to have some text made of emoji? Hopefully you can see that with this system, we can do many, many lovely things. Maybe I'll make it 3D and run a camera around in here, offset a few copies in Z space, make some of them glowy and transparent so it looks more like we're inside a Computron. There's so much you might do from this simple starting point. Well, that brings us to the end of it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Evan Abrams. If you have any questions about what we did here, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out as best I can. If you make something cool with this, and it's almost impossible not to, tag me on Instagram or send it at me on Twitter. I would love to see what you do. I'm at EC Abrams in those places and anywhere else on the internet, really. If you would like more of this kind of thing, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the new stuff coming up around here. We have new tutorials coming out all the time. And if there's a topic that you would like to see specifically covered here, just let me know. Get at me in the DMs anywhere. I'll try to make it happen. Thanks again for watching. Stay creative, be kind to each other, and I'll see you around the internet.